he joins us tonight. Glenn, thanks so much for coming on. I, sh I should say, and I, I don't know, just be quiet and let you speak, since you know this better than anyone, but we left out a lot of de details that are being reported in the Washington Post, the New York Times, et cetera, tonight about the leaker and where this all came from. Because honestly, I don't believe anything. And it's very hard to know what's true. We're all being spun, we're all being lied to, and we just didn't want to repeat the lies. So with that, what do you make of this? I can't think of an incident, Tucker, that reveals more vividly the real function of our nation's largest media corporations than what just happened here. If you're a real journalist, somebody who's devoted to transparency, bringing, shining a light on the most powerful government actors when they lie to the American people and informing the public, you would be celebrating this person who stepped forward and risked his security to show his fellow citizens that the government was lying about this incredibly important war with a nuclear armed power that we have actual troops deployed on the ground in Ukraine. There's going to be no diplomatic resolution through at least 2023 that Zelensky is planning on using our weapons to strike deep into Russia, which we were told would never happen, risking escalation. He did the job of what journalists claim to do, which is show the public the truth. If you work for the intelligence agencies, you would be furious at this person. You would hate him because he revealed that you just lied. He exposed the truth about what you were doing. What's amazing is the New York Times, the Washington Post, all the people who were at that Pentagon briefing today think the way the CIA and the Pentagon think. They hate this person. It was the New York Times and the Washington Post that did the FBI's work and found the leaker and led the FBI to him. They're demanding that he be punished. They're demanding that the government clamp down and keep things more and more secret. What kind of journalist would ever do that, would want to see a leaker exposed and punished and then demand that the government keep even more secrets? But that is what this, these, these media corporations are there to do. They love leaks when the CIA and Homeland Security tell them to leak. That's when they disseminate propaganda in the public, like they did during the Trump years when they leaked the transcript between Michael Flynn and Ambassador Kislyak, the most serious kind of leaking crime. The Washington Post did that. Nobody looked for that leaker. Nobody cared. Everybody cheered because it served the interests of the security state. But when it comes to transparency that undermines the agenda of these agencies and that proves to the American people what the truth is, it's amazing that these journalists are on the side of the government and will actually hunt down the leaker and demand that he be punished even more. Okay, I just don't understand. understand. Thank you. So with that, I want to introduce someone who's actually a legend who I have a great deal of respect for and just spoke at the UN Security Council um, about many things. And I'll let him uh, describe his time there. But he is a former CIA whistleblower himself. Um, so and as a former CIA uh member of the intelligence community that left it and started another organization. So um, I wanted to uh, proudly introduce Ray McGovern. Ray, thank you for coming. You're most welcome, Tara. Uh, yeah. You'll have to forgive me for being a little hoarse here. I've got a head cold that just won't quit. I'm so sorry. Well, I hope you get better. And I'm, I'm just so honored to have you on the show. And I wanted to you know, you, you and I spoke on the phone a couple of times in the last couple of weeks. You were on the Kim Iverson show, and I really appreciate you doing that interview. We, we had just aired that last Friday. And, um, and since then, this whole Pentagon leaking thing has happened, and there's been, you know, the documents floating around. It came from a gaming website called Discord. What are your thoughts on a 21-year-old F3 a ranking, getting a hold of top secret documents, it looked like he was a cyber journeyman, but other than that, um, it's kind of unclear how he got those documents and they were floating around for like a month. So what are your thoughts on it? Well, uh, to be a little flippant here, he was no just regular airman. He was an airman first class, right? Mm -hmm. He was promoted last July. How he got uh, access to all this stuff is really a big, big question. Um, everyone is trying to uh, look at the role of the media here and uh, try to figure out who did what, who shot John. Um, investigative reporters like Glenn Greenwald are really good doing detective work. Uh, but I have to say that there's a very big story here that has not really been elucidated 
and uh, I may be wrong in interpreting these things uh, this way, and it wouldn't be the first time I was wrong, but here's my take. What's important here is the facts are out, the unimpeachable official facts. Ukraine is losing. Russia is winning. The spring offensive that everyone was waiting for with bated breath may not come for, well, till the summer or maybe maybe next year. It's not going to happen, okay? So the, the story that has been given to the public is just 180 degrees opposite that. Ukraine is winning. Russia's forces have been degraded. Uh, they're going to run out of ammunition. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think, well, I don't know whether the intelligent people really believe the stuff that they have been putting out with journalists and apparently briefing the president on. For example, um, just a couple of months ago, uh, April Haynes, uh, she's nominally uh, Bill Burns' boss. She's the director of national intelligence. She sits above CIA, NSA, DIA, all those are three-letter words. Um, she said, you know, when spring comes, everything's going to be really good. Uh, I'm very optimistic that we'll be able to go forward. Russia is running out of ammunition. They don't have the the factories to produce what they need, it's going to be really bad for Russia. And besides uh, China, well, China's playing it pretty cagey. Uh, they're, they're not they're not putting their weight down in either either side of this this uh, imbroglio. Well, I mean, nothing, Tara, nothing could be farther from the truth. Uh, China and Russia are now. We joined at the hip. I think the Chinese defense minister is Moscow now. They're preparing they're preparing contingency plans to see what happens in Ukraine and see what happens vis-a-vis -vis Taiwan. Mm -hmm. So what, what comes out of these documents is that uh, we've been sold a bill of goods and even our top intelligence advisors have been uh, misleading not only us, but probably the president. What's the bottom line? Well, the bottom line is that Ukraine can't mount a, a decent counteroffensive this spring. They're losing. What the real situation is, is that the Russians are ready, once they clear out some of these places like Bakhmut, to go all the way west to the Dnieper River. 